have been tracking all the fallout all night long from that California massacre. The worst mass shooting since Newtown. It has stunned a country, our entire country, one more time. And this time the crisis played out on live TV, ending with an explosive shootout. There is the SUV driven by the killers. Family members say they were a husband and his wife. You see it completely shot up. Hundreds of bullets fired in that final standoff. It ended less than four miles away from where the terrible rampage began at that government building. Police chasing them from a nearby home. So many moving images from the scene. Survivors embracing, escaping, pausing for a moment of prayer. 14 people were killed in the rampage. Another 17 wounded. Police say there were just the two shooters, the husband and wife, despite early reports of there being three. Both of them were killed in that shootout, leaving behind a six-month-old baby. So hard to imagine. There is a live look at where it all unfolded. A center to help people, some of the most vulnerable in our society. And our team coverage starts with Amy on the scene in San Bernardino. Good morning, Amy. George, Robin, good morning to both of you. In fact, uh, right behind me across this field is the very building where that horrifying tragedy unfolded. And in fact, you can still see the vehicles, the cars left behind by all of those employees who raced out of that building, some of them taken by bus, some of them unfortunately taken by ambulance. We know that a man who worked in this building for five years left a work training event, some say in a very angry state, and returned 20 minutes later with his wife, both of them heavily armed with assault rifles and semi-automatic handguns. A first-hand glimpse inside the terror at the social services center. I'll take a bullet before you do, that's for damn sure. Which culminated in this wild chase. Dozens of officers closing in on the two gunmen speeding away in a black SUV. Holy guys, shots right now. Hundreds of shots fired as the married couple inside the vehicle battled with 20 officers. When it was over, the two suspects, 28-year-old Saeed Farouk, an American-born citizen who worked in the building for five years, and his wife, 27-year-old Tashfeen Malik, both dead. The day of bloodshed started at 11 a.m. Tail in black clothing, still firing rounds. When the heavily armed couple entered a conference room at the Inland Regional Center, which serves the mentally disabled during a work training conference. Multiple shots, shots going off like crazy, just one right after the other. Police arriving on the scene within four minutes, the entire three building complex on lockdown, many watching from their windows. Making entry through the back door east side. We have several down in the conference room, several down. I need some medical aid in here immediately. Hundreds of workers evacuated with their hands in the air. Police say Farouk, a county employee, was attending a company party at the center, but left under angry circumstances, only to quickly return dressed in dark clothing, armed with assault rifles and handguns, opening fire. He was acting nervous, left the building. 20 minutes later or so, the shooting began. Based upon how they were equipped, there had to have been some degree of planning that went into this. Uh, so I don't think they just ran home put on these types of tactical clothes, grabbed guns, and came back on a spur-of-the-moment thing. Countless innocent people going about their workday, terrified, taking cover inside the buildings. Everybody just started running through the halls, and we squeezed in our conference room, barricaded the doors. Some phoning their loved ones while bullets were ringing down the hallways. I said, turn off the lights and don't make a sound, and that was it. Terry Petit receiving this message from his daughter. Shooting at my work, people shot in the office waiting for cops. <laughs> but she's okay. Pray for us. I am locked. I am locked in an office. That's it. The motive of these shooters is still unknown at this time, but even if we do ever get that answer, it will do little to ease the pain of this community. This is this nation's deadliest mass shooting since Newtown, Connecticut, back in December of 2012 that left 26 people dead.